Where there's a will, there's a probate. <laughs> Avoid probate by having a trust with your will. In this episode, I'm going to simplify and answer the question, how does a trust and a will work together? I'm not an attorney, but I have trained many attorneys on how to properly structure an equal opportunity trust to work in conjunction with your will. So I'm going to make this simple and show you how they work together and what is the difference. So first of all, let me help you understand where I'm coming from. I've been a financial strategist, a retirement planning specialist for more than 46 years, and I've helped many, many people uh, create an estate by accumulating money and wealth. And also I want to help them preserve the estate, especially after they pass away. So I've met with many of my clients with attorneys that I trust to help them set up their trust, revocable living trust, to do it under rules of governance, equal opportunity instead of equal distribution, which is another topic because so many attorneys have boilerplate trusts where they just sit down with you and they, they find out your net worth, uh, your assets. And the next question they ask you is, well, how many kids have you got? Because what are they going to start doing? They're going to start dividing up your assets equally when you die and dump it in your kid's lap in equal distribution. And I teach in my various books and educational courses that there is nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals. And people go, what? No, 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 no. See, I don't believe our creator gives equal distribution of health to all of us, regardless of how some of us may choose to abuse our bodies. Uh, our creator gives us equal opportunities, not equal distribution. Cause I've noticed that simply dividing up the estate, just killing the goose, sometimes laying the golden eggs of business or your investments and dividing it up and dumping it in kids laps. It ruins half of the kids in the nation. And they sit around, when do I get my share? and they become entitled. And so I wrote a book called Entitlement Abolition, and I show how to create your trust with equal opportunity rules of governance, where you have equal opportunities, but not equal distribution. But let's go back and talk about what does a will do uh, and what does a trust do that a will doesn't do. First of all, if you die without a will, you still have a will. It's the one the state wrote for you. It's called dying intestate without a will, but most people do not like the state's will where they die because the state may say, nope, this is how it's going to be treated. And most people don't agree with that. So they go out and they write a will. Now I mentioned at the beginning where there's a will, there's a probate. Yeah. So when you die and you have a will, if you want the will to be followed, that will must be adhered to under the jurisdiction of a court. And so when you do that, that's called probate. Probate is making sure that everybody gets their share of the estate according to law. And that process is called probate. The sad thing is uh, there's about six or seven parties that have to be satisfied before your heirs that you named in the will get their share. Roughly, you know, first of all, the federal government, if there's any federal tax, they get first lien, then state and then local taxes. Then uh, I think it's the attorney who is handling, uh, they come next in line. You have the executor, the, uh, the, the estate, and then creditors. Creditors have to uh, claim their claims uh, during that time period when it's in probate. And that's actually an advantage of probate because when you start a probate, there's usually a window of time, maybe 90 days, once you publish the probate in a local newspaper where creditors have to come and make claims. After that, they cannot make claims anymore. So probate may be good to file. And that's why I usually recommend you at least have a will so that you can probate things and get rid of creditors that can't come out of the closet five, 10 years later to your heirs and say, Oh, well, you didn't ever go through probate. And, and do you know that your father, your husband uh, owes me money? 
if you want to just say sorry you had your chance you needed to file a probate you needed to go through that process if you didn't they can sue you okay and so probate can be good but probate can get very expensive and lengthy things can go through probate for two and three years and it can drain out a lot of the assets in the process so i would recommend eliminating probate being lengthy and set up a trust so there's two things that a will still is very valuable for even if you have a trust in conjunction with a will because the question here is, how does a trust and a will work together? If you have both, a will does two basic things that you can't do in the trust. Number one, it names the guardian of any minor children you may leave behind if you die, if you have dependents. Uh, it names who will be the guardian. And if you don't like the state deciding that, because I've seen some families where a couple uh, gets killed in an automobile accident, they have four children and the state says, oh, no, that's too many to leave behind to your sister, your brother, or your mother, whatever. Even though they're willing to, they say, no, you got you to divide up your family. You, you got to separate your family. So a lot of states say, no, you have to separate the kids. Uh, you have to put some with this family, some with this family. And maybe you have an agreement in a trust that says, no, my sister is willing to take all four children and, and you have, uh, you know, sort of an agreement with one another or what have you. A will will name the guardian of your children, but you can also specify that in a will instead of the state determining that with their will. The second advantage to a will is any asset that you forgot to register in the name of the trust, uh, whether it's money in a bank account or a stock account or whatever, any money that is not in the trust, the will acts like sort of a vacuum cleaner. It picks up all of the assets that you did not put in the trust, either on purpose or most people just forgot when they opened this bank account or they bought this stock or they bought this piece of real estate, they forgot to register it in the name of the trust. And so unfortunately, those assets go through the probate and then they end up in the trust and are distributed according to the trust document, but it doesn't avoid probate. So a will sort of picks up assets and puts them in the trust after probate. So it, it works like sort of this, this vacuum cleaner. Okay. Now, what does a trust do that a will doesn't do? A trust has six basic benefits that a will does not provide. Here they are. Number one. So with a trust, you have privacy. See, when you have a will and it's probated, that is public information. You can go down to the courthouse and anybody can look up your estate, your assets. It's not private. If you like privacy and it's none of other people's business what you had in your estate, establish a trust. You have privacy. Number two, you can avoid probate because anything in the trust, I mean, it's basically settled in one day. You don't have to go through lengthy probate time and cost because the trust, it, it settles your estate in one day because it's cut and dried where those assets are going to and in what ratios and so forth. You can still use a will to maybe pass down heirlooms, uh, Aunt Effie's vase, your mother's wedding ring or something like that. But most of the assets in the trust are going to just be distributed privately down to the heirs in the way that you designated to the successor trustee. So it avoids probate. Number three, it cuts the liability usually in half. If you have an AB trust or like for my wife and I, I have a trust with my business assets. My wife has a trust with the domestic assets. But it, see, we have liability protection and we also have estate tax protection. So a trust can cut the estate tax maybe in half because if you have an estate tax exclusion, $5 million, I mean, back in the 1990s, it was 600,000 and it went up about 25,000 a year. Then it went up to a million and a million and a half and then 5 million. Whatever the exclusion is, if it's 5 million, you get 5 million excluded from estate tax. What's estate tax? It's the government assessing tax on the transfer of assets from you down to your heirs. That's called estate tax. It's due within nine months after death and you have to file that estate tax return. So if you have a lot of assets, if your net worth 
is in the five, 10 million and greater category, then you would pay tax on anything over and above that. And it has started out at as much as 36, 37% and topped out at 55% in the past. Many Democrat initiatives want to bring the estate tax back to 55% and have it start at any assets or estates worth over a million bucks. So you wanna make sure that you double that. The wife can have a million dollar exclusion and the husband, a trust lets you get double the estate before you start paying estate tax. Does that make sense? For liability protection, it means if you got sued in this Sue Happy Society that we live in, uh, if somebody uh, slipped and fell on your front porch or if uh, somebody was jumping on a trampoline in your backyard or if you got in an automobile accident or if you let a, a 16 or 17 year old uh, grandson or maybe their friend drive your car and they got in a wreck and they said, well, you were irresponsible for letting my daughter or son drive that car. I've had all kinds of lawsuits filed against my clients for those types of things, for taking children camping or water skiing and they got hurt and they've been sued for five and $10 million. If you have a trust and the attorney did it correctly, the most they can sue you for is for the assets that are in that trust. If it's 50% in the husband's, 50% in the wife's, the most they can wipe you out is 50% of your assets. Now, there's other strategies I teach in other episodes of how you should have your boats and your, your rental properties and your cars and your jet skis and your four-wheelers in LLCs so that the most they can sue you for is the value of the LLC. And if there's only a four-wheeler in there or a boat, that's the most they can get. Most people don't know about that. And so the most they can sue you for or wipe you out is 50% if you divide up your assets into two trusts or an AB trust. So it gives you liability protection for lawsuits. It gives you protection for unnecessary estate tax by giving you double the exemption. Now there's two additional benefits that most people don't think about. What are they? So far, the four advantages, again, it, it eliminates probate if you have a trust. It keeps things private. It protects you from liability lawsuits from being totally wiped out. Uh, it can cut your estate tax liability in half or double the exemptions on that if there is an estate tax that affects you on your uh, net worth. But the last two advantages to a trust most people don't think about. Number five, it helps you preserve the love of the family. Most couples that I talk to, they do not want to destroy the love of their family, their children. And I have seen numerous examples where fights break out between the children on who gets what. Well, mom told me that I got that and da, 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 and that's unfair. And I've seen horrible examples where uh, with one couple, uh, one of the sons said, please give me my inheritance early. Sort of like the story of the prodigal son in the Bible. And he said, give me the restaurant, dad. And so the dad did. And he said, this is in lieu of uh, me getting uh, mine later, my inheritance later. And he says, well, let me make sure it's clear with your siblings. And they all said, yes, he understands he's getting his inheritance early. We don't want the restaurant. He does. Well, long story short, the son inherited and took the restaurant and he ran it into the ground and it went bankrupt. And when his father died, guess what? He came around saying, where's my share of what's left? And his sibling said, what? You got yours. And he says, well, it's not worth anything anymore. And they said, well, that's not our problem. You ran it into the ground. And he never spoke to his siblings again. Now, see, if you want to preserve the love of your family, make sure you have a trust and the trustee must administer it exactly as you say. They can't argue, they can't fight. It's the way it's been done. So a trust helps you preserve the love of your family and keeping them together because most people I've talked to, they go, it doesn't matter uh, how many millions I leave behind if it destroys the love of our children and they never want to talk to each other again. I don't want them to get one dime. I don't want it to ruin them. So that's why they set up a trust. So what's the last advantage of a trust? Many people don't think about it till it's too late. It's what I call the second spouse syndrome. 
See, many, many times uh, I've had clients who the husband dies or the wife dies. I'll give you an example. I had one client where the wife died six months after she retired at age 65. She was a secretary at a high school. They had dreamed as a couple of retiring and living out retirement for at least 20 or 30 years. He was a master electrician and he retired. She died of a massive heart attack and uh, they had two trusts. Now, they named me as the successor trustee on their trust. But see, on his trust, his half, he could make the changes while he's alive. On her trust, nope, I was the successor trustee. Well, he was lonely. This always happens, okay? And he finds another uh, woman. She says, you know what? Prove your love for me. Put everything in my name. Well, he did on his assets. I warned him against it, but he got really mad when I wouldn't put the assets in his, uh, his deceased wife's trust in her name. I said, I cannot do that. I'll be sued by your children. And he was so angry. Well, when she finally got everything she could in her name, she went, bye-bye. And she took his assets and went away. He was so grateful that the other half in his wife's trust that he didn't listen to his new wife and put it in her name. I couldn't do that. That was all he had left. Well, that's because of the second spouse syndrome I'm talking about, but it's even worse than what I've just explained. See, many times, if they even get along, the husband or the wife, the survivor remarries, they live out another 15 or 20 years, maybe happily, which some do. I hope many do. Guess what happens? When this person passes away, if you don't have a trust and your spouse didn't, then all of these assets that you named for this spouse continue for the rest of their life and benefits their wife and children or their husband and children instead of yours. You disinherit your kids when you remarry and you don't have a trust because your new spouse and their posterity gets all of the assets unless you said otherwise in your trust. So that's why a trust takes care of that. Only your assets can be used for you during your lifetime. If you exhausted those, then you can use your deceased spouse assets only for your basic necessities, but you can't take out that money and live high on the hog with a new spouse and then leave it behind to their children. You can't do that. If you want to protect that your assets, at least your half, go down to benefit your blood posterity, set up a trust to protect that. You're still taking care of your spouse, but you're not letting it go to somebody you don't even know and you've never met before and their children. So those are the benefits, six benefits of a trust. A will can designate guardian of your minor children. It can act as a vacuum cleaner, cleaning up things that were not put into the trust. It may behoove you to probate the, the will to get rid of any creditor claims down the road. But other than that, I would not use just a will. I would use a trust for those six additional benefits that wills will never have. If this has intrigued you and you want to learn more, watch this episode. Learn where a lot of uh, my clients put their serious cash in their trusts and in their wills to make sure they don't outlive their money and that their family has equal opportunity rules of governance and they never outlive their money because this is a serious topic, one I'm very familiar with, and there's opportunities in these additional episodes for you to get free copies of my various books so you can learn, you can read, you can listen, you can watch and learn and empower yourself.